Mix. This is your boy Maintain back with you. This is my uh, Nonito Donier and Pee Wee uh, Vietka post fight thoughts. Uh, I'm gonna get right to it. Um, I'm just gonna play devil's advocate with this uh, with this video. Um, and you guys let me know. Uh, first off, I am a Donaire fan. I wanted him to win the fight. I do want him to win the fight if they have the rematch. But uh, to me, this could have been a controversial stoppage here. And I'm just, like I said, I'm just going to play devil's advocate. You guys tell me what you think. Um, it's unfortunate. I think we got robbed of a really good fight. Both these guys are, are good fighters. Um, Donaire, obviously, coming up in weight, uh, going in 126, um, fighting for this title. And uh, Vieka, who who worked hard to get the title by going to Indonesia and defeating Chris John, who hadn't who hadn't lost in like 19,026 years. So uh, you know, congrats to him on that. But let's start with the first round. Um, these guys start going at it, and uh, they have a clash of heads. And uh, Nonito gets cut over the eyelid, which uh, you know, following boxing, that that's like the worst place you can get cut because. You know, if it's on the eyelid, it just bleeds directly into the eye. So immediately, I mean, this guy's pawing at his eye. He can barely see, you know, but he's fighting through it in the first round. Um, he gets beat in the first round. I had him losing the first round 10-9. Uh, moving to the second round. Um, comes out of the gate. The uh, cut man did a good job. You know, he puts the Vaseline over, holds up. But the first time, uh, Vieka, or Vieka, or however you pronounce his name, touches it, starts bleeding again. Um, uh, Vieka, Vieka, however you pronounce his name, sorry, uh, is controlling the round. I have him winning the second round 10-9 as well. Now, <clears throat> going into the third round, I thought the cut man did a really good job because the cut was not bleeding at this point. It didn't bleed pretty much the whole third round. It didn't bleed. Um, and I thought with that, it helped Donaire. Um, he was able to dominate the round. He controlled the round. I had Donaire up, uh... Uh, Donaire winning that round 10-9, therefore I had uh, Vieka up two two rounds to one, uh, as, as well as Steve Weisfeld, who was scoring the fight for HBO, um, had him up two rounds to one. So at least that's how it looked, uh, like it was playing out in the fight. Now comes the fourth round, and in between this, uh, Luis Pabon, the referee, is, is calling timeout. He's called already like two timeouts, and he's taking Donaire over to the corner, and they're checking him, the doctors are checking him, saying he's good, sending him back out. Now in the fourth round, um, Donaire's pretty much controlling the fourth round, and then he lands a big left hook, and Vieca goes down. Um, and I think that was a turning point in the fight, because the minute he goes down, Donaire goes, he attacks him, and then you see Donaire paw at his eye, and then he's looking at the referee, you know, and the referee calls timeout again. He goes to the corner in the fourth, and, uh... The doctor looks at it, you see the doctor wipe it, and the doctor actually gives a thumbs up to the referee, send him back out there. Now, fights for the last, this was with 23 seconds left in the fourth round. Sends him back out there, fights those 23 seconds, and then the bell rings after the fourth round. Now, if you know boxing, um, how it works with a internet incidental headbutt is, um, within the first four rounds, if it happens... Um, and the fight has to be stopped because of the headbutt. Um, it is a no contest. They got to, you know, do the scrap again. Um, if it's after the fourth round, the fourth round is finished, then they go to the scorecards. Now, here's where the controversy lies. Donaire's fighting through all this, through the first four rounds. Um, he pretty much knows that he, he controlled the third round. And he got the knockdown in the fourth round, making it a 10-8 round. So, if you're doing the math now, <laughs> we have... Vieka, let's just say, let's just say he took the two, the first two rounds like I thought he did. Let's just say that. We know Donaire won the third, and he had a 10-8 round in the fourth, therefore putting him up on the scorecards. He knows he's clearly up on the scorecards now. Okay? It's funny how after the fourth round, Donaire is pleading, not pleading, but he looks like, you know, he's he's like, ah, I really can't fight now. Like, that, you know, the doctor looks at him, goes to the corner, checks with all the doctors. He's he's over the ropes. I don't know if he's talking to the commission or just, I don't know who he's talking to over the ropes. Turns around and he's just like, I'm, I'm stopping it. That's it. It's over. And it's funny how it just happened to happen right after the knockdown in the fourth round. That's the only thing with me, you know. I'm wondering if that knockdown never came would Donaire have been 
saying, no, no, let me get one more round, let me get one more round. I bet you he would have been fighting a little bit more to get that extra round. But knowing that he had the knockdown, he can pretty much, you know, he was safe in knowing that he was up on those scorecards. Again, let me, let me not discredit him as well. It takes a lot to fight through. Uh, uh, the you know a cut of that magnitude. I mean the thing is bleeding. You know it's just dripping right into his eye. He was also saying that the ointment, the Vaseline they were putting was going into his eye as well. I'm sure it was affecting his vision. So I give him props for fighting those four round, four rounds. But it's just funny that after the fourth round, immediately after the bell rings, they want to stop the fight and go to the scorecards. You know so. You know, it just, it sucks. Again, I'm just playing devil's advocate. I do want Donator to win the fight. If he has a rematch, I want that too. But, uh, you know, I, I think it could have been, you know, it's just a little conspiracy theory of mine. But uh, let me know what you guys think. Also, you know, they said the right things after the fight. I think it was a class act. He said he'd give Vic a rematch. You know, he's going to give him a shot back at the title. Um, but um, do we really know that? I mean, he's at 126. You got... Johnny Gonzalez at the top of, of the 126 division. He's got a bell. He's fighting in Mexico. Let's say he takes care of business and wants to offer Donaire a fight to unify the titles. Who's to say that Donaire is not going to do that? You got Abner Mares, who's coming, who's coming back. If he takes care of business right now in the summer and he wants to fight Donaire at the end of the year and make an event, you know, at the StubHub Center, we all know what a big venue that is. I mean that that. That in itself would be a, just a huge lucrative fight for for Donaire. Who's to say he's not going to take that that offer? If Guillermo if Guillermo Rigandau, his arch nemesis, says, "Listen, I'll meet you anywhere between 122 and 126, and I'll give you a shot back at my title." I mean, Donaire would really love to get that fight back, especially now while he has still he still has something left in the tank. So, I mean. Hopefully he does the right thing and gives this kid a rematch because, you know, he deserves it. But I, I don't know. We'll see. Let me know what you guys think below. Comments, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Peace.